In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserved thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant to the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is risen, alleluia. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Alleluia. Remember how he told you, alleluia, that the Son of Man must be crucified and on the third day rise. Alleluia. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. He is risen, alleluia. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Alleluia. Remember how he told you, alleluia, that the Son of Man must be crucified and on the third day rise. Alleluia. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. We humbly pray that we may live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the resurrection of our Lord is from Isaiah chapter 25, beginning at the sixth verse. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, 
and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. And it will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at the 12th verse. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then even Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished, if in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, and by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he puts all his enemies under his feet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us therefore celebrate the festival with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah! The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the, lo the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter then came out with the other disciple, and they went toward the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, 
and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying and the napkin which had been on his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at his head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Saying this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and said to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Christians hasten your to pay. Alleluia. Offer ye your praises meet. Alleluia. At the Paschal victim's feet. Alleluia. For the sheep the Lamb hath bled. Alleluia. Sinless in the sinner's dead. Alleluia. Christ is risen today, we cry. Alleluia. Now he lives no more to die. Alleluia. Christ the victim undefiled. Alleluia. God and man hath reconciled. Alleluia. Well, in strange and awful strife. Alleluia. Led together death and life. Alleluia. Christians on this happy day. Alleluia. Haste with joy your vows to pay. Alleluia. Christ is risen today, we cry. Alleluia. Now he lives no more to die. Alleluia. Christ who once for sinners bled. Alleluia. Now the firstborn from the dead. Alleluia. Throned in endless might and power. Alleluia. Lives and reigns no more. Alleluia. Hail eternal hope on high. Alleluia. Hail thou King of victory. Alleluia. Hail thou Prince of life adored. Alleluia. Help and save us, gracious Lord. Alleluia. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Peter and the other disciple raced toward the tomb that first Easter morning. Mary Magdalene had just come from there and went back to tell the disciples what she and the other women had seen. The tomb was empty. There was no body in the tomb. 
They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. He was there just the night before. They would placed him in the tomb. The stone rolled in front of it, sealed, guarded. So the two disciples needed to see it for themselves, this incredible thing which Mary had told them. The other disciple, most likely John himself, made it to the tomb first and just poked his head in, in amazement. He sees only the cloths lying there. No body. No Jesus whom he had just seen upon the cross the day before. Just the cloth that was wrapped around the body as it was prepared for burial. Next came Peter, who entered into the tomb and sees for himself the face cloth folded up in a proper place. John then relates to us a profound truth. He gives to us an insight into what was going on in his own head that morning as he gazed upon the empty slab of stone where the body had just been. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. He believed that something was going on, but admits that he doesn't understand it completely. He didn't understand that this must take place as the scriptures had spoken. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. It's truly remarkable, profound, what John has to say concerning the resurrection of our Lord. The disciples would come to know and understand. Peter would proclaim on Pentecost that the resurrection was a fulfillment of Psalm chapter 16, a messianic psalm. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. They would come to know and be shown by Christ and illumined by the Holy Spirit. And so because of this necessary event, we celebrate this day, even this year. Even as we're scattered to our own homes, the church still celebrates this most holy of days in the church year. The day when our Lord was raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have died. The resurrection is still remembered and proclaimed this day that our faith may be strengthened and our joy may have no end. The resurrection witnessed by many, proclaimed throughout the ages, handed down in the faith from generation to generation, is this highest of feast days for the church and will continue to be so until our Lord comes again in glory to bring us to be with him. Because, as John tells us, he must rise from the dead. And this necessity of the resurrection, which John speaks of, is a divine necessity. It was brought about and willed by God himself that the Christ would suffer and die and on the third day rise again. Jesus spoke of this many times with his disciples as the events of Calvary drew nearer to their appointed time. But then one may ask, why? Why is it necessary for the Christ 
to rise from the dead. So let us consider a few this morning as we meditate upon the great and glorious resurrection of our Lord. The first we will consider this morning is the universality of death itself. Isaiah speaks of the covering that is cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all people. Death is is a certainty in this life. It will come for all men. God said to Adam in the curse, dust you are and to dust you shall return. From Paul in Romans we hear, therefore just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin. This is the consequence of sin. Death is a reality all around us. We try very hard in our society to mask it and cover it up. We don't like talking about it, thinking about it. We try to shoo it away into a corner, stave it off for as long as we can with any form of cream or technology that we can muster. We don't like it. We push it away, out of sight, out of mind. We don't want to think about it. But then we are confronted with the frailty of this human body, of life in this world. The reality of death comes. For it is a universal truth that death shall come for each man in the end. Writer, poets, and songwriters have written concerning this fact throughout the ages. And so it is in the resurrection where death is destroyed. Again from Isaiah chapter 25. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Death has been conquered, destroyed in the resurrection of our Lord from the dead. He has crushed the power of death. This great consequence of sin has been swallowed up as he burst forth from the tomb, victorious in the work which had been given to him. It seemed to have been the end, to be defeat. But the resurrection shows that the power and control of death over mankind has been broken. For God is a God of the living and not the dead. He has brought us out of death and into life. As Paul says in Romans chapter 6, we were therefore buried with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. We who have have been baptized have put on Christ. We have been buried with him in a death like his, that we might be raised to life in him. Death no longer has dominion over us. That which Christ accomplished in the resurrection has been given to us that we might possess it as our very own. We have life in him now. And so for the second consideration, let us look to our epistle lesson for this morning. For if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and our faith is in vain. There there were some in the church at Corinth who even so quickly after the resurrection itself were denying that the event took place. So Paul explained why the resurrection had to happen. 
Never mind the witnesses that saw the risen Christ, most of whom were still alive at the time of Paul's writing, and who even then were chronicling their eyewitness, inspired by the Holy Spirit, that it may go out, go forward, be handed down through the generations. But Paul pointed out the fact about preaching and faith. They are both in vain, worthless, empty. They are nothing if Christ is not raised from the dead. The gospel itself hinges on the truth of the resurrection. That faith which we have been given in our baptism by the Holy Spirit relies and clings to the truth of the resurrection. That faith which has been handed down through generations stands upon the truth of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the very foundation of our faith. That faith which binds and unites us even as we are away from one another, which binds and unites us with all the faithful of every nation, tribe, language, and people, binds and unites us with all the faithful of all time from the very beginning until Christ comes again to bring us into glory with him. This faith, which gazes upon cross and empty tomb, it is by this we have forgiveness and life. It is by this we have the hope of the resurrection that we subsist in in this life. And if the resurrection did not happen, then we truly are most to be pitied, as Paul would say later. And even worse, we would be found to be lying about God. As Paul says, we are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. If God did not truly raise up Christ, Paul argues, then we have been lying about God and what he has done. And really God would have been lying about what is taking place. He has said, that he would not abandon his servant to Sheol or let his Holy One see corruption. The Spirit has testified to the working of God in Christ. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We truly praise and give thanks to God for that which, he is, which has been worked in us in Christ Jesus. The covering over all men has been cast off. Death has been swallowed up. Our faith is not in vain, but rather strengthened and sustained by the Holy Spirit in word and sacrament that we might endure all things. This is truly the incre incredible fact of this day. But the beautiful thing about the church year is that this is not something we remember and celebrate only this day. Truly, the Easter season continues throughout the next weeks until Pentecost. Fifty days we celebrate this glorious resurrection of the dead for several weeks as we, as we give glory to God and hear the truth of the resurrection told again and again. As we sing, sing out the truth of Christ, as we here again proclaimed for us the very truth of the resurrection. In fact, even as we leave the Easter season, every Sunday is truly a remembrance of the resurrection. 
as we come to hear the word of God read and preached for the edification and strengthening of the faith. As we hear the gospel of cross and resurrection read and proclaimed. The resurrection truly was a necessity. He must rise from the dead, as John would say. He and Peter may not have understood it all then, but they would. And they would go on to proclaim this truth as they were called to do so. We continue in this line as the church. We live and subsist in this truth of the resurrection. Our faith can do no other. We share this truth with those around us. We praise and give thanks to God for that salvation which has been accomplished for us, for that forgiveness and life everlasting. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace that is from above and the well-being of the churches of Christ and for the godly unity of Christendom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who in faith, piety, and the fear of God offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Matthew and Eric, our shepherds and bishops in Christ, for all pastors and teachers and all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our nation and all our people, for our president and Congress, our governor and legislature, our judges and magistrates, and all who serve in public office, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and the sorrowing, for those who mourn, for those in need and distress, for the homebound and the infirm, for those to whom death is drawing near, and for us all, that when our last hour shall come, we may depart this life in the confidence of the sure faith, the consolation of a right, devout, and holy hope, and in the communion of Christ's holy church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Recalling those who have gone before us in the faith and rejoicing to share with them in the Sabbath rest, which Christ is one for his people, that together with them we may be found faithful in the day of judgment and rejoice in the day of the resurrection of the dead, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, merciful Father, your thoughts are not our thoughts. Your ways are not our ways. In your wisdom, you have permitted this great sickness to befall us. We implore you, let not the hearts of your people despair, nor our faith fail us, but sustain and comfort us. Direct all efforts to attend the sick, console the bereaved, and protect the helpless. Bring hope and healing that we may find relief and restoration. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. Have compassion, O Lord, upon all who mourn and upon all who are lonely and desolate. Be thou their comforter and friend. Give them such earthly solace as thou seekest to be best for them. Bring them to a fuller knowledge of thy love and wipe away all their tears. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
O Lord, look down from heaven. Behold, visit and relieve thy servants who are sick, for whom we offer up our supplications. Look upon them with the eyes of thy mercy. Give them comfort and sure confidence in thee. Defend them from the danger of the enemy and keep them in perpetual peace and safety. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. <clears throat> 